in, in this video, I will give you a quick tour of Talent Open Studio. First of all, what is a Talent Open Studio? It's a open source integration or ETL tool, where ETL stands for Extract, Transform and Load. And you can connect almost any data source uh, from a source to a target and transform the data in between. It's a GUI based tool that basically generates code and that you can execute anywhere. In this video, I will give you a quick overview. So this will not include a installation. Also I have a video on this uh, right here on YouTube or a deep dive. If you want and that deep dive, please go to the URL as shown here on the picture. But now without further ado, let's get over to Talent. And here on the left hand side, we've got the repository. It's got the job designs itself and other uh, metadata for building our integration processes, such as metadata, which is the data about the data for the definitions, for example, for a, a database source or for other systems like Snowflake, uh, NoSQL uh, systems, as well as in different file formats. Or here we can also find uh, contexts, which are groups of variables and a code section we can even extend in the studio with your own Java code. Then here in the middle, when you have a job open already, like I do, you have this so-called designer. You can see here on the bottom left, it says designer, which actually generates code. When you switch over here to this code tab, you can see the code. You cannot edit it, but you can see it. And to configure such a component here, when I click on this, you can see it has at least this component tab or here this run tab to execute the job uh, context tab for context variables and in this uh, job tab. And then here on the right hand side, we have the palette, a collection of components grouped into categories that allow us to build in this kind of jobs. So if I, for example, I want to use a row generator, I can search for this here, row G type parts of the name and then and drag and drop that into my job. The same for example, for the Tmap component, which you could find in processing uh, category. Or once you know the components and you uh, just want to insert them in your job, like a logo component, left click somewhere in your job and start typing parts of the name and that you remember. For example, log R for a piece of the name from T logo, and then hit return button on your keyboard or left click the mouse again to insert it into your job. And this job that you can see here is something similar to what I will build in this quick tour together with you. Here we are generating some random data. Here we transform the data and here we output it to the console, but the input and the output and the transformations can be pretty much anything else and that you might imagine. To create a new job, I can right click here on job designs and select create a job and give this thing a name. I already prepared something here so I don't have to bore you with me typing this stuff out. I call this job quick demo. I now want to use row generators and search it in the palette. I can drop that into my job. Next step should be a mapping. So I type T map and press return on my keyboard and log R for log row and again return. So these are the three components that I will use. You can see I can move them around. I can delete them again if I accidentally edit it or I want to redesign my job. And now let's go ahead and configure them. Here in row generator, I wanted to generate some simple customer data, some random customer data. So double click in this case on the icon of row generator and here on the left, click this green plus for as many columns as you might need. But I want a customer ID, a first name and a last name plus a country abbreviation. And then uh, for alphanumeric characters, uh, for these name columns and the country column is okay. But here the type for the ID, I want to use all numbers. It makes it easier to have a out of the box function to be able to create these values. When I select integer, go now to functions here in the next column, I can select numeric dot sequence. It has three parameters, a sequence identifier, a start value and a step, which are quite fine for my case right now. And then I can go to the next column first name. 
I don't want to ask a random string here, but whether I want to use from a talent a data generator category, this get a first name. What this will do, it will take a first name randomly from a list provided inside this method. Similarly for the last name. So I pick this get last name here. And then for the country ID, I want to provide something uh, individual. So what I will do to be able to do this, I select this empty function here represented by these three dots. And then I can go to the value field once I selected this function. Okay, and then from my uh, text editor, I can copy and paste the values that I want to use here. Okay, so you can click on this three dot button in the value field. And now you're in the expression builder and can put different values. These are a two digit ISO country codes for different countries that I want to randomly use for each of the rows to be generated here. And also there can be not defined countries like null values, like the null in a database. And we don't need many rows. Let's uh, stay with 15. And here at the bottom left, uh, we can also hit the preview button when we clicked on the preview tabs before to get an idea of what data will be generated. This looks fine. So I click OK here and then I can now go ahead and pass this information to my uh, team up component. Double click on my team up here on the left hand side. We also have input in the middle variables if we define them. And on the right hand side, we need at least one output now to add an output here. I click on this green plus here at the top right. So I go with the standard name. We will only have this input and everything from this input uh, is going to this output. So I can select it and drag and drop it to this output. But instead of a first name and last name, I want a full name here now. So let me just change that column name first. Okay, full name. And now uh, cut this one here from uh, the expression from the first name column and go instead uh, to this three dot button to the expression builder here for the uh, full name. So what I want to do is something like the first letter from the uh, first name plus the last name and a dot after the first letter of the first name. So I would just concatenate the strings. Okay, so for example, here now a row one first name plus and then in double quotes, the fixed part of the string, which is a dot and a space, and then plus the last name. The last name should be converted to uppercase. I can just type dot two and then u, and I have the two options here, and I grab the first one to uppercase. And here for the first name, I need a substring, a portion of this string now, which is only the first character. There are two ways to, go, to do that. First, very easily in Java, we can get the character at position zero, or we can get the substring from zero to one. Okay, if we type here dot sub, we can get a suggestion of what substring functions are here. I want to use the one with the begin and end index. And so I take begin index zero and end index one. And this is pretty much it. And now I can confirm it with OK. And this first name column I can delete. Please not delete here on the top right, but at the bottom middle, just to delete in this column, not to delete the whole output that we created here. All right, and then I can click OK to confirm my changes. And we will see the output on the console when we connect TMAP to this logo component. But now in TMAP, we already created an output. So we right click it and select row and the output name from the output that we already created, which is out of one. And we can connect it to this logo component. For this logo component, it makes sense to have this in a table mode because then it will be printed in a table like format here on the console. So I can run my job. I hit run here and you can see the corresponding output. When you run that again, you can see the values for the full name and the country will change because this is obviously random values and the uh, IDs here uh, are picked uh, again and again and the same values from the sequence that we defined. All right, and then one more thing I wanted to show you here, how easy it is also to use this TMAP uh, to join really different data sources, like you would join data from database tables in the database. Uh, here we can put another uh, reference inside our job itself that has like the lookup values for 
the complete country names instead of only having these abbreviations. Okay, for this purpose, inside the job itself, we can use a component which is called fixed flow input. Uh, for the component, when I double click the icon, uh, I get to the component tab and can edit a schema. A schema is a definition like in a table of what columns with which data types are there. So I add two columns, let's say ID and a name. Let's make it really short, okay? So it's the country ID and the country name here. And I click OK. And now instead of uh, using a single table here, I switch this to use inline content. And here I can pre paste pretty much something like from a CSV file, okay? And I also prepared that here in order not to bore you with me typing this out. For all the references and that I have here for the two letter ISO country codes, I have the respective translations into English. For example, DE is in Germany, IN India, and so on for the other ones. So this is going to be our lookup, our uh, right side drawing table, let's say, and also this one, the data flow I just connected to TMAP. And now in the mapping, I can extend in the mapping to include uh, this information. Right here you see from the row one input, we have this input column country ID. I just drag and drop this to the corresponding column where I want to find the corresponding uh, abbreviation in my lookup, which is the ID column here. And then I can take the country name and drag and drop that to the output as an additional field here at the bottom of the, below these three ones, which are already there. And maybe I can also rename it. For example, here I can now call it country name uh, in order to be able to distinguish it easier from the uh, person's name uh, that I already have in, in this output. Now I confirm this change with okay and also propagate the changes because this log row now receives one additional column and I can re-execute my process and you can now see how easy it was to add a new step to my transformation to get the complete country names here in this case as well in my output on the console. And obviously, like I said before, from the palette, you can see it are from my jobs that I have in grouped into different folders here on the left side. It could be pretty much any other data source or target that I could be using here, be it files, databases, cloud systems, big data, web services, and many, many more, plus obviously many other uh, transformations. All right, and this is all to give you a quick overview of Talent Open Studio. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You will be notified of our weekly new videos. And if you get curious and want to learn much more, then go to bit.ly slash talentedata. There you will find my talent course. See you soon.